Number two, if you really want to foster the health of your, uh, the emotional health of your children, if you really want to protect your children, you have to take care of yourself. It's so important for you to take care of yourself emotionally. And it's equally important for you to take care of the relationship between you and your spouse. Now, why do we have to take care of ourselves emotionally? Because studies suggest that pe parents who are emotionally healthy will raise emotionally healthy children. Why? Because our children model our behavior and they learn from us, correct? And there's a saying in Arabic, فَاقِدْ الشَّيْءْ لَا يَعْطِي the one who is empty of something, who doesn't have something, how can they really give it to someone else? So we ourselves have to take care of ourselves. And you know, I know that's one of the problems that we have in our community. You know, we become so very um, focused on helping everyone in our families. We become so focused on the cooking and the cleaning, focus on work focus on even our participation at the masjid that we forget ourselves and we forget to take care of ourselves and you have to understand it's so important because the Prophet وسلم, when Salman al-Farisi came to him to complain about al-Buddarda that he went to his house and his wife looked so sad and he asked her why are you sad she said, because my husband, all he does all day is he fasts all day and he prays all night. I never get any time with him. And so when they sat to eat, what happened? Abu al-Dardat said, you know, you go ahead and you eat, you're my guest. And Salman al-Farisi is like, I want you to eat with me too. And he's like, but I'm fasting. And Salman al-Farisi made him break his fast and eat. And then at night, he didn't go to sleep. He stood up to pray. And Salman al-Farisi told him, no, you need to sleep and I'll wake you up when it's time to pray. And so after this incident happened, they went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and Salman al-Farisi was like, telling the Prophet, this is what I saw. And Abu al-Durda is like, yeah, can you believe what he did to me? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, لِنَفْسِكَ عَلَيْكَ حق. Yourself, your body, your mind, your soul, has a right upon you. Take care of yourself. The best gift you can give your children is for you to be emotionally healthy and for you to have a healthy relationship with your spouse. It's so very important because children who grow up in households where there's a lot of conflict between the parents, they don't feel secure. They feel very insecure and they develop anxiety disorders and depression. So the best thing that you can possibly do for your children's emotional health is to work on yourself and work on your relationship with your spouse, inshallah. And that's one of the most impactful things that you can do. Number three, make your home a source of mercy, tranquility, safety, and peace. It's a scary world out there. We all know that, right? SubhanAllah, I recently read um, a study that was from the University of San Francisco. They were doing a study and research on Muslim children between the ages of five and nine. And their findings are very disturbing. One in every three Muslim children are afraid to let their friends at school know that they're Muslim one in every six actually lie and say that they're not. They actually pretend they're not Muslims. So when our children don't feel safe and secure outside of the home, we have to ensure that yes, we work on that, but what's in our power and what's in our hand is to ensure that our homes are a sense of safety and security. That at home, when our children come home, they find that peace and that love and that mercy that they need because they're not getting it outside. And that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's Allah's right upon our children, is that we take care of them. And so research suggests that children who are in families who spend quality time together, 
who are in families who have strong relationships develop emotional resilience and are less likely to later develop mental health disorders. So take care of your homes. You know, we worry so much about outside that we forget about the inside. Take a look at the inside. How is your home? How do your children feel when they come home? How does your spouse feel when they're home? Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that our homes are for us to find sakin and tranquility. Are our homes a sense of sakin and tranquility? We have to ask ourselves that. Number four, communication. I know we talked about this a little bit yesterday, but it's so important. It's so important to have open and healthy communication with our children. I can't begin to emphasize how important that is. How important it is for us to listen and to be non-judgmental and non-reactive, to show lots of empathy and to never criticize. I want you to think about this instance. You know, we always talk about the Qur'an and Sunnah. We always talk about how the Prophet ﷺ did things, right? And so alhamdulillah, we're all so great at implementing certain things like our prayers. MashaAllah. Like growing the beards and wearing our abayas and our hijabs. But what about these lost Sunnahs? A young man came to the Prophet ﷺ and he said, Ya Rasulullah, give me permission to commit zina. I want you to imagine if your child came to you and said, um, Ammi, Abu, uh, I want to commit zina. Imagine what your reaction, if there was a camera on your face, what would your reaction be like? And so when we're reactive, do you know what happens? When we overreact and we don't react in a calm manner, our children will never tell us anything again. But look how the Prophet ﷺ dealt with the situation. Did he get angry? No. Did he yell at the young boy? Not at all. Did he scold him? No. Nope. Did he shame him? No. Nope. He explained to him. He spoke to him in a manner where he could understand that that's not right and that's not what we do. And so be non-reactive, be non-judgmental. Because guess what? If your children can't come and talk to you, unfortunately, they're going to find someone in school that they're going to talk to and get all the wrong advice from. So it's so important that we listen to our children and that we don't react and that we're non-judgmental and that we never dismiss their feelings because the Prophet ﷺ never made someone feel like their feelings didn't matter. He never dismissed anyone's feeling. He was always very attentive. He gave them their full attention, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And you have to ask how you can help, how you could make them feel better. What is it that you can do? And then actually follow through and do it. And that leads us to our next, our next key to fostering our children's emotional health, and that's trust. And trust is built in small moments of connection. Show your children that you are there for them no matter what. Respond to their bids for connection. What does that mean? I'm going to give you an example from the time of the Prophet Because subhanAllah, he was the most perfect human being. One day he, was, he left his house, he had a mission, he had something he had to do. And while he was walking on the street, he noticed Anas radiallahu anhu's younger brother sitting there. And he didn't just walk by. He noticed that he was distressed. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam stopped. Even though he was very busy, he had something very important to do. But he stopped. He bent down. He put his arm on the child and he said, Assalamu alaikum. How are you? How's your bird? trying to understand what's going on with this young boy. So a lot of times we miss those bits for connection and that stops us from building trust with our children. I'll give you a real-time example. So let's say you're on the phone, right? You're on the phone and your child walks in from school and they look distressed. A way to build trust is to tell your friend, hey, you know what, I gotta go. 
um, Ahmed just walked in. Inshallah, I'll talk to you later. Hey, Assalamu alaikum, Ahmed. How are you? How is your day? You know, you look a little distressed. Is everything okay? That's how you build trust. Another thing that's so important about building trust is to believe them when they tell you something. You know, one of the most disturbing and heartbreaking things I've ever heard is when a young sister came to me and told me she was a victim of sexual abuse. And subhanAllah, that wasn't the most disturbing part, and I know that's very shocking. The most disturbing part is when she said, I finally gained enough courage to tell my mother. And when I did, she said that I was lying. SubhanAllah. Don't do that. Believe your children when they tell you something, especially something like that. That's something that most children don't make up. And you'd be surprised at the statistics and how many children are abused in different ways by very close family members and friends. So always believe your children. And don't be dismissive. You know, one of the beautiful things that the Prophet Sallallahu tells us about Khadija is that she believed in me when other people didn't. Be like that for your children. Build that trust. 